this episode of the Elite Podcast, we speak to entrepreneur and founder of the Cannon Run, Jay Cannon. We were filming Channel 4 at the time, and obviously the traffic that it was generating for the Cannon Run was mental. Yeah, they came to us and they said, what's, this, what's the deal with Andrew Tate? If he's involved in your business, then unfortunately, we can't be involved with you. We had Rolling Stones magazine ringing us from America for interviews. BBC turning up at my house. Andrew's only digital footprint in the UK is the Cannon Run. Jay, how you doing, mate? Very well. Good. Very well. Made, you made it here finally then? Yeah, I've got stopped by the police on the way over, obviously. Kind of run style, but thanks for having us. Oh, now what car were you driving on the way up? Um, the McLaren 720 that we did kind of running. Oh, no, so. sweet. That's a lovely car, mate. Yeah. Do you find that you do it just to trap the police? I don't really know what happened, to be honest. Just I came through some traffic lights very casual because I'm on 18 points, so I can't afford to put a foot out of line. 18? I thought you could 18. only have 12. You can only have 12 unless the judge gives you major discretion. <laughs> So Shit. I can't even afford to put a foot out of line and I was going dead steady and yeah. he just come behind me and stopped me number plates and windows and some daft, daft bits and bobs. Did you manage to charm him then? No, he gave me a, he gave me a ticket, he charged me a fine, like, but he didn't give me no points. So. Oh, flipping out. Did you tell him the truth or just say oh, No, he said, he said to me when I, he was like, Mr. Cannon, I said, yeah, he said, you can't do nothing wrong with 18 points, can you? I was like, no, <laughs> can't do anything, sir. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Always call him sir. Yeah. I do. Do the police, all police and doctors, I always call sir. Anyway, out of respect. It's respect, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Did he know who you were? No, I think he just had already PNC'd the registration number through, which obviously brought up the ownership. Ah, uh, yeah, so yeah. When he got out, he's just like, because your company now, Cannon Run, like, it's known, well, not just nationally, but worldwide and around Europe as well, isn't it? Yeah, we've, we've, we're very well known across Europe. Um, we're spreading out into different areas where we're known now, like America, Dubai, bits, bits and pieces. Oh, really? Like that. Yeah. Wow. Bloody not that we're doing events there. It's yeah. just the content we do, the cars that we own, the, the projects that we build, the runs that we do, the news travels quite far and wide through the motoring community, doesn't it? And it's, Absolutely. Social media's made it a small place. Absolutely brilliant. Well, I'd love to get, I'm going to get onto all that if that's great. But I wanted to start off first of all um, and just talk about growing up. And you grew up in Telford, did you? Or I partly did. in Telford? Because I'm from Telford. Yeah, no, Telford, yeah. I yeah. Did. Yeah, home, home ground for me. Um, what, what part? I lived with my nan and granddad from when I was 18 months old in yeah. Colbrookdale. So just outside of Ironbridge. Ah, yeah, yeah, got I you. lived there till I was 17 and then I was out and gone doing my own thing. So, um, you, uh, what, what did you do when you did that age? Left school at 15. Yeah. Didn't do my GCSEs, didn't do any of my qualifications, which I probably should have done looking back now. Not that it would have helped me a lot in the life path that I chose. Yeah. But I would have paid more attention to certain things which you would never know would come into play later on in life. So mm. geography, maths, English, definitely I'd have paid a little bit more attention in just because Figures and facts, obviously, for your business is maths. Yeah, English yeah. For me, is press releases and newsletters, blogs, that sort of stuff. And obviously, geography would, would have come into play massively yeah. rather than me having to learn it all again <laughs> at a later date. So You learn all the lessons of life, though, I find, through through one thing normally that you're interested in. Yeah. I did for me because yeah. I'm um, dyslexic. Okay. I didn't find out until I was 35. I just <laughs> okay. sucked at everything at school. But as soon as I got into business, then all of a sudden, you and now, yeah, now I need to communicate with people, so I need to learn to spell properly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Now yeah. I'm doing deals and I'm charging money, so I need to whip my figures out and I need to do a and l and understand yeah, it does, it, how it all works. So you got a bit more of a motivation to figure out, you know. It does come in to play really handy at later dates, but as a young lad thinking my car passions, my, my passion lays with cars. Yeah. I just couldn't see how English literature or science or geography or anything was going to come into play. I didn't no. know that cars would take me into the world in terms of different places and seeing different things and then even the business side of it. I just thought I was always going to be a racing car driver and all that mattered was... Yeah, of course. All the pedals and the track. Whereas so, it's not like that, is it? So, no. So you, when did you start uh, racing? I started racing when I was eight. So my dad forged my birth certificate for me and got me into... <laughs> Why, how old did you have to be? You had to be 12. Oh, did you? So okay. I was four years younger than everybody else racing. Yeah. Um, and I was always on podium, did really well. Um, and I had to leave that championship at age 12 because I would have then been 16 ah, right, on got paper. You. So I was the youngest looking 16 year old you'd ever seen. <laughs> no way. Um, and still whipping everybody. And then I went into junior rallycross, did a bit of that, and then did a, bit, did a bit of drifting. And then I went into circuit racing, which I only stopped doing maybe three or four years ago. Oh, right. So you were still racing as a, I didn't realize yeah. you were still racing as, a, yeah, you know, mean, as an adult. Yeah, me and my dad both went into circuit racing. So I did it first for two years when I was about 20, 21 
on my own and I did really well in the lowest category of our championship. Yeah. And then when I moved up into the highest class, my dad then built a car to come racing with me and we had Brilliant. one really good race where we finished second and third together. Oh, no way. That must have been good. Yeah, it was, it was some Good that. bonding experience with yeah, the dad. Right. I got out of the car, I was second and he was third. I looked at him. Oh, so you beat him as well? Yeah, oh, him, yeah, even yeah. better. Beat him, yeah. <laughs> so it was nice, but it was a good, real, real amazing experience to come across a finish line with your dad in your rearview mirror in Absolutely. two race cars at a place like Brands Hatch full of spectators it's amazing. not like a small championship it was a fairly big thing televised and so yeah it was nice who won nice. um I can't remember the guy's name now yeah there was, a, there was the lad should have shaken baked there was oh mate honestly <laughs> shake and bake shake and bake um there was, there was always me and another lad I can't remember his name now it's been that long and it was always like cat and mouse cat yeah and mouse, yeah yeah and second and it was yeah, so he come first, and I think I actually put my dad across the grass in that round. Did you? He tried to come up the inside of me, yeah, and I'm just, I'm, I'm there for my points, I'm competitive. Yeah, yeah. And you, I wasn't letting him through, so we had to cut the grass and <laughs> lose a bit of time, but yeah, it was good, it was really good. So I had a real good sort of knowledge around racing, race cars, motoring, motorsport from the age of day dot, really. Yeah, and sounds like when, it. Yeah, even when I was a kid, when I was young, my dad did, um, it was called Lightning Rods, so that was in a Sierra. Um, and it was like stock car racing, full roll cage and all that. And my dad was always, I think he actually won the championship when I was young. Oh, right. Wow. So um, he was... Serious pilot, my dad. Yeah. Really, really, really. I didn't know that. I didn't know your dad was... Because yeah. I know your dad as well, don't I? My dad would probably half out drive me. Would he? To be honest. Yeah. Maybe not now, but every bit of drifting, sliding, all that sort of stuff that I've sort of learned and done has always come from my dad. I can remember like... I was probably 10 or 11 and he had a Lotus Carlton. Yeah. And it was like the f fastest four-door saloon car in the world at this point in time. 375 horsepower, top speed, 175 mile an hour. And it was the first car to ever outrun the police helicopter. And um, I can remember always coming up from Tesco. Onto the who who was driving it when it outrun a police helicopter? No, no, no. That <laughs> Not was, your dad then? That, no, that was just an example <laughs> of that car. It might have been. Yeah. <laughs> might have been, like, been back in the day. Yeah. yeah. And um, I can always remember coming off Tesco Island and I'd say to him, snake it, dad, because he used to say, that's what he used to call it, snake, and it wasn't known as drifting then. Yeah. Like, snake in the back end. And he'd always come around the bend sideways, flat out in third. He was a very, very good driver. Like. Ah, brilliant. So, yeah, bred into me. Yeah, it sounds like it as yeah. well. So uh, your dad's always a good businessman as well, isn't he? Like Phenomenal. exceptional businessman. Like, exceptional. Just for anyone who's listening, like we only met each other like a, a year, year or two ago. Well, just yeah. every year, about a year and a half. The first time I met you actually was when I came down to the industrial estate when my dad had just bought it. And you was outside, I think, or one, it might have been one of you. Lads. No, it was me, it was I you. remember. I was like, we have to mate. it. Like, I thought, it's my unit. I was like, right, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I just thought, who the fuck's that? Yeah. I was just like, fucking, <laughs> listen, if, we're, if we drive past any of the properties, any of the commercial buildings that he owns, I always swing in and just have a look because if you ever found something happening, it's nice to be able to put a stop to it for you. No, tenants. you guys have absolutely did great. So if, just for anyone listening, your dad's uh, recently um, owns the whole industrial estate that my headquarters is yes. based in and he took over it and then he's like revamped the whole thing hasn't he literally poured it all down he's built me a new full-time center literally from scratch yeah and when i first the first interaction i had with your dad was funny because i thought he rang us up and he was you know he's like <laughs> just black and white dead man. matter of fact borderline rude yeah literally, he, goes, yeah. he goes literally I've, uh, i thought it was a joke to start with it's a <laughs> dorley accent on him some telvin bloke just said yeah i've just got the unit now you can sign the i mean i'm going to be taking over you can sign it this is what it's going to cost if you don't you fucking just leave i was like who the fuck's this and i and i thought is it a joke or is it really and i thought i better not like say anything just in case that's how it is honestly but do you know what he's he's at least you know where you stand. Yeah. But like there's no bullshit with him. No, no, no. No messing around. It's black and white. <coughs> this is how it is. If you want to do it, we'll do it. And then nine times out of ten, if you do it with him, it comes back tenfold. Do you, you know anyway. what? I'll be honest with you. He's absolutely brilliant. He's the best landlord. because I've got multiple uh, centres all around the UK. He's the best landlord by far. He's done loads to help me. But, you know, you judge people by what they do, not by what they say. And I've always found that as well. Actually, you know. speak louder than words. Yeah. And he is, in really, you know, he's, he's just putting it out there and he probably dealt with that many idiots before oh, but as soon as I met him face to face with sound we got on really well and he's and he's helped us out and he's been he's been a good landlord yeah no he's um his, his mind is phenomenal the way his brain works I, I could ask him well, how much his VAT bill was last year and he'd tell me to the decimal point yeah I could ask him how many units he's got and he'll tell you how many 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 square foot he's got in one area, Bloody who hell. the tenants are. Yeah. Like, he's, he's a machine. Like, I, I couldn't tell you, my turnover last year, I could yeah. give you a rough idea, but I couldn't tell you down to the point. And he knows, the way his brain works, how much information it stores, 
Like, yeah, like a photographic memory almost. I look at him now, honestly, and I'm, I, when, I, when I was young, I didn't really want to listen too much. No, you don't, do you? It's no. your dad, isn't it? And I wanted, yeah, but I wanted to go and... My dad was always very predominant in our area. Yeah. He was very well known, and everybody knew me in our area because of my dad. Mm. And I wanted to get away from that and move out of his Of course, shadow. yeah. Be and, your own man yeah, and create your own version, legacy. Yeah, yeah. And, and you have as well, bloody hell. And you, you conduct yourself. Um, you're both very successful, but you've got a totally... You've gone a totally different way, haven't you? So your dad's like would be very reserved. Not He's not even been out of the UK, has he? Or? He, 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 went on, he went to Belgium once, and that was to buy an Escort Cosworth or a Sierra. He yeah. Might, he'd, he'll correct me on which one it was and then we all went away to Portugal one year about 10 years ago okay so he's and not really been out the UK no, that he, much that, after you come back from Portugal he said I'm never going away <laughs> did he? he said honestly I hated it and then you've got yourself where you literally have been to every corner of the world in all the best places all the five star all the five star locations you could literally probably go to any of the main cities out of in in Europe and, and ring connection. up and get yeah. you and get have a connection, get yeah. in the main clubs, the main places. Yeah. You got a fleet of luxury cars to your disposal, you know, to, to, you know, at your you, disposable. Yeah. Um, and you've you've got a, a boat, a luxury place abroad, a, a pin up girlfriend. Yeah. Like, yeah. did that all happen on purpose? How did how did you go from being like a racing driver to kind of doing this with your life and building yeah. what anyone would class as like the pinnacle of success? It was more. It was more like, not instead of racing car drive, it was more like moving away from the scrapyard lifestyle of oil and dirt. Ah, uh, yeah, didn't grit. your dad have a scrapyard? Yes, yeah, so yeah, that's right, of course. In, in sort of was that the one by uh, Lightmore? Yeah, yeah. Lightmore. I used to walk past that. I used to live in there for yeah. a few years, well, walk was, back and forwards. Yeah, it was a massive place. It was shit scary at night when you was a kid walking Mate, down there. There's no lights no or anything, was it? Real bad. So I'm definitely going to get yeah, mugged this time. Yeah, or hit by a truck. Especially walking past that dodgy uh, scrapyard. Yeah, <laughs> listen, it was, we had this conversation with my dad a few days ago, actually, and it wasn't just the aura of a scrapyard. Yard, it was the lads who worked for him. Everybody who worked there was somebody yeah. from Telford. There's all there's all sorts of uh, rumours that they put dead bodies in their uh, de- <laughs> put, put dead bodies into their into the vehicles and I've, crush them. I've and every seen a lot. Of, I've seen a, a lot of my sort of street side street wise. Yeah, came from that scrapyard. I bet. I saw yeah. it all. I heard it all. I yeah, yeah. A lot. I was involved with a lot of stuff when because I, I when I was. When I was 16, yeah. 17, my dad had really had enough. And he had done... Of what? The scrapyard. Oh, uh, okay. And he'd done maybe 18 years of seven days a week, even at Christmas, they were open. Christmas yeah. Christmas day. They, were, did, they did shifts. And um, so he was, he was starting to take a bit of a step back. So I was running the scrapyard with me pal. I was 17. Oh, you used to run that as well? And oh, no on way. On Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And I used to open up and close up and run it on a Saturday and Sunday. So everything that I'd seen him deal with over that sort of time period that I'd been there mm. came then to me and my pal, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And um, it came down to when he, when, he, when he sold the business, he said to me, do you want the business? Is this what you want to do? And I said, no, I don't Ah, uh, right. So he's going to lead it. And like, listen, if I'd have, looking back now, I wouldn't have changed my decision. But having to create all of this myself yeah. has took me 10 years maybe 12 and I'm still not in a position now where I would have been after year two of ownership of that scrapyard. No. Because the money that came through those doors was a lot. It was, it was a big, big yeah. scale. Company. But it just, what didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it just wasn't me. Yeah. And I just knew that I wanted to do something different. I knew I wanted to do something with cars, motoring, motorsport, something like that. But I just didn't know what it was. Mm. And even when I went racing, it, it was very hard to get sponsored as a driver. It doesn't matter if you're first, second, all podium, all yeah. the time. Sponsorship is very hard to come by. Getting somebody to fund mm. your racing career is... Because they're not really getting much back on sponsorships, do you? Not really. It's more, it's more of a bit of a favour for someone or so it's helping someone. for somebody that loves motorsport, basically. Yeah, That's yeah. Because let's face it, that as the as the camera walks down the grid, they're talking about the driver and the car. They're not yeah. talking about Pirelli that's on the front left corner of that bumper. No, no. You know what I mean? So it was quite difficult to get that, which is then... When really the idea of Canon Run started to come around, um, which so, I was like 19 then, yeah. maybe even 18, and I tried it and it didn't work. Not that it didn't work, so, I didn't have the knowledge, the funding, the know-how yeah, yeah. to even begin, do you know what I mean? Yeah, do you mind telling us about how it, it didn't work? So it's really interesting because, yeah. so, you, um, you know, you've got to make these mistakes and put yourself out there to, to get to get some traction, haven't you, sometimes? So when I first started Canon Run, 
I was um, I just I, all, it was all about the European event, the flagship mega run. That was all I wanted the, to do. Yeah. I didn't see anything else. I just saw the just some big annual one once world, a yeah. year. Yeah. And we got no bookings, no interaction, no not even any really any likes on the page or anything. Mm. And I thought with my surname being Canon by birth, that gives me goodwill to use that in my business title. Does it from a legality yeah, does, point yeah, of view as well? View, yeah, 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 good. Gives you goodwill to use it because there's a film called the Canon Run, isn't there? So it's when the, it's the Canon Ball Run. Ah, the so Canon Ball Run. Ah, okay. So I thought with a little bit of that common ground it may encourage people to come and book because of the credibility from the film yeah I, I did do you know that time because I didn't know it was you I, yeah. didn't, I didn't put two and two together even when I rang up because I've been on the the flagship event the mega run last year and I didn't Matthews. even know that it was and then all of a sudden when I spoke to you the penny just dropped because I'd heard rumors but I just thought cannon run was the big thing yeah the big thing yeah. like something in, in line with yeah. the film the yeah. film and and that was the idea for me when I was young was to try and make people think that without saying it yeah you know what I mean because it brought me like I said massive credibility so but anyway there was there was no booking so you had nothing. no you had no likes on your Facebook page no, hardly like, any interest yeah no interest no interaction so did you did the event actually go ahead no. or so I pulled the event and then I launched I thought I've got to do something now where People aren't having to spend as much money where I can create some content. Okay, yeah. Get a bit of a word of mouth going. You just went too big too early, was it? I think the sites were too big for what... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, too big too early. Yeah. But I just had my sites set high and I think that's... Somebody said to me, and I'll never forget it, if you, if you aim for the moon... No, what's it say? Aim, aim for, for the stars. stars. You'll always be over the moon. Yeah. Some bollocks, like yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Paraphrasing. Did, yeah. Yeah. And um, so I created the first UK run and it was a massive failure. So... I had a bright idea to create the Valentine's run. Yeah. And I quickly learned that no couples want to go and do a car ride. It's a, it's a man thing, really. Yeah. The okay, you do get some well, listen, I had, partners. I had 18 up. or 20 cars. Did you? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, I'm my first one. And I advertised that there was going to be supercars there. And, all, and at this point, I was driving a Mercedes E-Class. Didn't yeah. have a supercar. And I'd never even been interested in supercars. I always thought they were just for really, really rich people. Is your mic good, yeah? Yeah, sorry, mate. Yeah. Um, for really, really rich people that lived in London. Because when, when I was young, 10, 10, 12 years ago, social media wasn't what it was today. No. And it wasn't as easy to see a Lambo or a Ferrari. Just go on your Instagram and look at it. Yeah, yeah, that's Where, it. Do you know what I mean? And, and it, they weren't around. So I was always interested in Subarus, Evos, Cosworths, that sort of stuff. Performance ones, Performance, racing yeah. cars. Well, ah. quick road cars. Yeah. Um, so um, I was advertising that there was supercars coming on the Canon run, and there was like first 10 cars booked, no supercars at all, I'm thinking. Oh, oh yeah. So then this guy booked with an Aventador with three of his mates in other Lambos. There was now four supercars. Brilliant. Which was what I was aiming for. Yeah. And they were all stickered up. All the packs went out, just like we did on Mega Run. Yeah, yeah. And we did three days around Cardiff to sort of um, Brecon Beacons and then up through the North Wales, up through the moors and stuff. And um, the content that we captured was brilliant. It gave me real images to use rather than Photoshopped stuff, which I was using at the time because I didn't have any content. Yeah. Um, and that's where it sort of began. So then... Because we did 20 cars on a trip, which was Valentine's, I then released September Slammer. Did you, did you make any money off that one or not? Uh, Break even? No, or? I didn't actually. You don't sometimes, yeah, but you've got to get traction. No, you created I could, some... I could, have made, I could have made a profit off that, but I was too I was too confident and I was too eager. So at the hotels, I booked 30 rooms at each Oh, uh, did you? I 20 cars, which I quickly learned how to adapt to that. Now. So do you have to, was you committed to pay for the rooms? I paid. Ah, shit. So you, so you, like you learn, room, so you learn next time just to reserve the rooms without having to be yeah, commitment so to pay. Is, is, is I'll estimate from the previous event from last year. Mm. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, September Slammer had 70 cars last year. Yeah. I'll ring the hotel and say, I want 65 rooms reserved with the option of taking 30 at the same fixed rate if we need them within the next four weeks. So you dictate the terms now, though, we as well, don't you? Terms. And you're able to yeah. because you can bring big business. But when you first start dealing with corporate hotels... Yeah and they know you're a young lad who's 22 and they know you're booking a vast amount of rooms and you're pretty uneducated mm. and kind of bully you and yeah, yeah. sort of manipulate the terms to their, what they want and what they need. Um, whereas they can't do that now because well, we know every nook and cranny, yeah, every, contract, yeah. every trick in the book. You're treated, yeah, you're treated like flipping royalty when you go there. You get your cars, you see, when you, when you, any of the hotels, you had your car parked right outside the front. And they know and you, because, the re, because when we did the research trip, yeah. you go to the hotel and you already build a little bit of a relationship of with course. Them prior to arrival. It's the most important thing, isn't it? Relationships building. When we go to a hotel, yeah. I'll go to three or four different five-star hotels in one city. Okay. And if the best one gives me a shit attitude or a shit service when mm. I get there, 
don't even stay. For the yeah, because once you rock up with 70 cars, they're going to be dramas, yeah. You're accustomed to it, and I can't have my clients. Shit rolls experience. downhill. Then everyone's going to you, moaning at you then at this and point. It's not yeah. It's not theirs. They're just the hotel that we used. Yeah. That we vetted. And if we vetted them and their staff's shit, it comes back to us. Of course. So, like, in Monaco, as an example, on Mega Run two years ago, we used the Hermitage, which is probably arguably one of the best hotels in Monaco. Mm. And the Fairmont Hotel, which is very sort of Formula One heritage. Yeah, yeah, of course. The hairpin out the front, you know, even the signs on the doors in the hotel have got the Formula One logo and the hairpin and all that. Their hotel is slightly more tired. Even though it's a five-star prestigious Monaco hotel, it's a little bit more tired than the Fairmont. But the service that you you get at the Fairmont as a car group in comparison to going to a hotel which don't really care about cars is is completely different experience. So that matters massively to the group when, yeah. when you're booking. So yeah. So they, that's 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 what we did first, the, the UK trips anyway, to get the traction, to get the name, to get the sort of videos and the promotional material. And yeah. Stuff. And then I launched Mega Run. And my first When was your first Mega Run? But that's the one that, so when you had the vision, it's the mega run always all along, wasn't it? And the other ones were like a building block, yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. And, and now what, what I've learned to be extra revenue, it might not be yeah, of course. a lot, but it's an extra event. It keeps our clients warm in between the big ones. Mm. And the networking that you do on any kind of run event, even the big ones and the small ones, the deals that materialize from the back of that, the things we get offered, the yeah, yeah. that get put forward to us, the deals we broker, is actually where we make our, our serious money. Ah, uh, right. So that it's almost a means to an end then, isn't it? Because yeah. we I went on your mega run, obviously, last year with my friend uh, Dan. And it, obviously, amazing experience, flipping, heavy nights drinking, days of, you know, very, very fast um, driving around some amazing places. And it was... The, amount, the people we met there, literally, didn't think anything of it at the time, met a load of people. One of the guys we met, one of your mates, got a bank. Yeah, and private the, bank. Yeah, well, private yeah. bank. Uh, a few weeks after I was back, my brother was in a bit of a situation. He was trying to complete on his house, moved all of his family into a hotel, couldn't complete on it. He had enough money in his Dubai account, but obviously it's going to take 10 days to do it. Yeah, so your guy was made, able to, you know, do it a lot quicker, you know, and help him sort it out and closed his deal and moved in moved his family into his house so just that yeah. in itself and now yeah. Danny works he does he's just done a few with things Ross. with him yeah, yeah he's done yeah. a few things with him with, with the network is is everything like without without that network and the, and the deals and the people the kind of almost to a certain extent wouldn't be worth doing for me mm. you know what I mean but it's that strong and it and it gives us that much in terms of friends deals even things like today, do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't have come and done this with you. Yeah, of course. We yeah, yeah. A trip together. Yeah. And it, let's say, just hypothetically speaking, it wouldn't happen. But if I had September Slammer, which was the last UK we trip, yeah. and we looked at it, and there was a massive balls up somewhere in the financial side of it, and we were only going to break even on the whole trip, I would still put the event on because of the network. Yeah. There's always new customers coming of the same caliber of people that we already have in our network. And it grows and grows and grows with every single event. And have you got other deals, uh, financial deals and businesses that have stemmed from your network? Because yeah. obviously this podcast is called Elite and anyone that comes on it is people, is only people that are right at the very top of whatever they do. Yeah. And you certainly are with what you've with what you've done. Yeah. Um, so it's good for people to like kind of hear how important networking is. Because I talk about this all the time. It really does open up the horizons to... Without Networking is probably one of the most important things that you can add into your sort of calibre as a person yeah. to go and do and to make it a necessity for you to go and do. Like, a lot of guys book Canon just for the networking stuff. So, yeah. Andrew Tate and Tristan, they've been customers of ours for seven or eight years before all the fame and fortune. And even up until... Not last year, the year before was their last mega run before they were put on house arrest. Yeah, of course. They book Canon Run and come on it because they are surrounding themselves with people that are that have got access to a lot of stuff or a lot of money, a lot of funds, but also people that don't want anything from you. Yeah. So you, you know when meeting you're on, meeting people on an equal plane yes. rather than someone trying to get their autographs yeah, or yeah. trying to get some hits on That's social it. media or anything. Yeah, yeah of so, course. So when, I, when Andrew bought his Bugatti. 
he um, I said to him, so what have you bought that for? Because I don't rate them at all, Bugattis. I think they are an overpriced Flipping out. Five million? It's 5.2 is it? Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. And you can get quite a few nice cars for that. Yeah, and better. I yeah. The money as well. And he said to me, it's not the car, G. It's I get invited to all of Bugatti's events now. So you're talking about networking again. And I'm sitting there with people that own yachts, jets, every Bugatti owner, 90% of them, this was the statistics that he told me, or something like mm. one of them figures, very high percentage, own two Bugattis, most Bugatti owners. Yeah. A private jet and a yacht. That's most Bugatti owners. Yeah. That's minimum what they've got in, in their sort of... In their arsenal. Yeah, in yeah. their arsenal, yeah. So you're sitting at a Bugatti dinner with people like... Who, what's the guy now that does the watches for him? It's uh, Jacobs & Co. Okay. So Jacob yeah. & Co., Mr. Jacob & Co., Mr. Jacobs, he created the Bugatti watch. He attends some of the Bugatti events. Yeah. You You can't put a price on having those types of people interjected into your network. It is priceless. Absolutely. Like it's, it's, it really is, it's, it's massive, so. So he, so basically that's how Andrew Tate's built himself up as networking. well, is through networking. Yeah, massive, well that's a big, big part of it. He's, he's done a lot of other stuff as well. Yeah, of course. That's he's, a massive part of what he's absolutely. done. Absolutely. And like I said, he only was booking the mega run trips to gain extra network, extra people. Was he part, uh, part involved with it in any way as well? So, so I heard rumors, so I don't know if it's yeah, true Yeah, two or years ago, um, there was a deal that we went to Romania to discuss and it was before all of the uh, yeah, of course. crime came basically. Yeah. Before all, all, the the, accusations. all the accusations yeah. of crime, yeah, that's what I said. And um, so we flew to Romania, we did a, we agreed a deal and shook on a 25% share of the Canon business yeah. for 1.5 million. Um, and Everything was sweet. Like I said, I've known Andrew a very long time, so if he gives his word on something, it's never something I yeah. need to concern myself about. I've sold him millions of pounds worth of cars over the last five years, and he always completes, he always pays, yeah. he never messes with about it. Um, and we were filming with Channel 4 at the time for the world's greatest auction, which was like a, a reality show, which is um, an auction house where they sell all weird and wonderful stuff. And we were, we were partaking in every episode. So it was like quite a big deal for us. And it was Channel 4 prime time, which yeah, is bloody hell. real big views. Yeah. And obviously a lot of sort of... Because it gets really now, isn't it? Channel 4, all, yeah. all the channels that there are. Yeah, 7.30pm, like, Channel 4, that's pretty yeah. sort of big for us. So, um, and obviously the traffic that it was generating for the Canon run was... Wow, mental. I can yeah. imagine, yeah. And um, we had a bit of an issue where they came to us and they said, what's, this, what's the deal with Andrew Tate? Blah, 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 blah. If he's involved in your business with them, unfortunately... We can't be involved. Really? In yeah, it was bad, mate. It was cutthroat. Like we had Rolling Stones magazine ringing us from America for interviews. Shit. And stuff. Like it was BBC turning up at my house because of- Andrew's only digital footprint in the UK is the Canon Run, or was at that time. Yeah, yeah. Run. Company's house, Andrew Emery Tate, director, the Canon Run Limited, and everybody was looking to get him to find him. So, so you had people him. rocking up on your desk doorstep BBC asking you questions. Came to, that came to our office, our registered offices, to, for an interview. Bloody hell. Um, but wait, like, I get, I get people messaging me, offering me 500 quid to a grand just to get him on the phone with him. Just If you can get, I'll give you a grand if you can let me speak to him. Yeah. Like, listen, I'm not that guy, mate. Yeah. I, I don't need your grand with all due respect either. It's not worth my relationship with somebody. No. But yeah, it was, um, it was very cutthroat at the time and it was a very pressurised time for anybody that was involved with Andrew. Um, so we, we cut the deal, we took a step back, removed yeah. him from company's house as a director. And that was it. And I said to him, look, you know, it's no hard feeling at all from my side. But yeah. money doesn't mean everything. And I'm not having a business which has took me nine years to grow. Now start having speed bumps put in front of it because what you're dealing with. Yeah. So the deal was cut, moved aside, and we carried on. And Was he all right with that? Yeah, he's signed, yeah. Is that, he still yeah. speaks yeah, to him? Yeah, speak to him. Nah, that's good. Him, yeah, yeah he understands it's the it's way it is. His business is business. Mate. Yeah, yeah. And if... if most people... He knows like, you're loyal, though. And yeah. I know you're loyal because I've... I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm you know loyal I mean? as they come, mate. Yeah. Like if someone's part of our, our team, our group, they've shown us respect or love, Yeah. we'll, we'll go the whole 100 yards. For yeah, we noticed that straight away. Me and Dan both said once we come back off the cannon run, off the mega run, I called you, I can't remember what it was for, but straight away you're like, we can do this for yeah. you, I can help you sort you out. Yeah, it's no, like, can- that's just how we are with each other. And I thought, these exactly be. the same. But the cannon run's become kind of like a concierge service now as well, because... People trust us that much and they, they get that same sense of what you've got yeah. about me and my business partner, James. And they'll ring us now and say, can you can you find us this garage or can are you interested in buying this property or whatever it is? And we get so much stuff brought to the table to help other people with. At the end of it, nine times out of 10, 
they see you have a good turnout of it anyway. Yeah, Even of course. Even if you do it off your own back from. You yeah, know, yeah, so. of course. So it's yeah, it's, we've built an amazing family, an amazing client base. We've been sponsored by some really big brands like Reynolds size. Stuff, yeah, do you know what I mean? Which is a car manufacturer. That's that's as big wow. as it gets. Really. Yeah. So it's it's quite a proud, quite a proud thing to have achieved. Yeah. It is. I mean, the mega run we did with you. Well, we did the la that's the last one, is it? Or you, you haven't done one since? Year we did, yeah. yeah. So that was this year. Yeah, it's this year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've done so much Four since. Months, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feels like a year ago. Well, that was an unbelievable event. We went. We started off, didn't we? What was it? Windsor, Windsor we Castle, off Royal Windsor Barracks. Yeah, and then how many cars were there? there Seventy, was, eighty, six, sixty-eight cars. And they were everything from Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Porsches, Porsches. Yeah. But then some, some McLarens, normal stuff as well. There was a few BMs and Range Rovers and stuff because people want the comfort. Yeah, 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 that's it. So I think if nice. I was going to do it again, you even said to us, didn't you? Because we got we got the Porsche. Porsche. I said to do and it that, comfy. It's a mess, fast car that was. Very and it was fast. good. Obviously, I got a bit of a bad hip as well. That I was noticing that after a few days. Um, but it was it was great. But I think we'll, next time we'll bring Range Something Rover. Yeah, yeah, bring a Range Rover. Obviously, we, we do the luggage carry service for everybody, which yeah. is a part of the service that we give. But if the van gets stuck in traffic or, you know, whatever the situation mm. is, your suitcase can soon arrive at the hotel an hour later than what you do. And some people have done Canon Run Mega Run three or four times and they've got that supercar adrenaline rush out of their system. Yeah. They still want the holiday in the network. It's so no. much more than just the cars though, isn't it? It really is. I mean, don't get me wrong, because the first time me and Danny did it, we wanted a Lamborghini. We're like, yeah. we're going to get a Lamborghini. We went to your mate, what's his name? Ken. Ken, yeah. Yeah, and we, we looked at the Lamborghini and it was that big. Yeah. It was like my waist no, tight. No I thought, I am not getting in and out of that. Yeah. And then we was like, I'm glad we got the Porsche. We got the Porsche. Porsche is a great car. And as a... As a tour car, so as a rally car, really, a Porsche, you've got quite a lot of space in. They're yeah. very, very fast. So quick. You've got quite a lot of luggage compartment under the bonnet. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't too bad, actually. Yeah. And there was kind of a small back seat, yeah. so you could throw a few two things in, the back. in the back and that as well. But you really can't beat... Sometimes. Only for two of you, though. Yeah, you can't. You. Yeah. You can't beat sometimes just putting your seat back, air comes off, <laughs> yeah. loads of space, crisps and chocolate and drinks and yeah. a proper road trip car. I think we, we missed the start line a couple of times. I'm not sure if you noticed or yeah, not. You're Did you? Yeah, you're <laughs> noticed. Did you? Because we're a bit on over. Yeah. But we made, our way, we made our way and we always got there in time in the end. So strategically, we try and plan the events so that like, night one, as an example, when we arrived to Luxembourg, yeah. we put you all in a hotel, which was in the middle of nowhere to stop you getting, all of you getting wrecked. For yeah, for the first night. night. Don't want yeah. to ruin it. Yeah. We'll find a way. Mate. Everybody found a way. Like, <laughs> doing the driver's briefing. We did it on the first night, on the the, open, the, the one the before, the, yeah, yeah, the before yeah. it with the, the black tie event. Yeah, but that, the, you couldn't really not there. Yeah, it, yeah. Fair. And even all the squaddies from the, the mess, they were all, they drinking yeah. flat. We started off on the back foot straight away then, was like, oh. But, yeah. And we kept that going, kept the momentum of that going for the whole trip. Yeah, no, it was, it was really good. It was hard work, but it was amazing. Because, like you say, you, you each night, you're having a drink, that you, you, you get to know everyone. When we first got there, I said, nobody. there's too many people. We ain't going to be able to get to know everyone here. The, but by the end of it, we knew absolutely everybody. everybody yeah. Because those evenings are great, aren't they? For yeah. unwinding, spending time with people. A lot of people cut away, didn't they, as well? At the we lost, we lost Monaco. Four, we lost four cars in Monaco that only booked two Monaco. Oh, did they? And we lost an extra two cars who booked the whole trip because they just... Just too much by then. Yeah, they were just ready to go home. Well, no, they stayed in Monaco. I did a stay, stay in Monaco. There, yeah. All right. Flip um, it now. You need some money on you to stay And there. to be fair, like not putting the first half of the trip down because the roads into Monaco were spectacular and the hotel at Annecy was great, but it was after yeah. Monaco for me was when the trip started. To yeah, do you know what? You, now you said that. The start of it was good and then it really picked up when it got to Monaco and then it did, got better. But it's you been, must have planned that. Yeah, do you know course, what I mean? Because yeah, otherwise... We, we try and do a research trip so you can plan as much of it as you want. That sounds fun. It's... <laughs> It's not that it's is a lot it? of pressure, a lot yeah. of arguments. Yeah. Oh, like, is it? Yeah. What with the, with the other directors to me, try? Me, James, my, my manager at the time who was with me, Tom. Like it, it's you spend, you try and do a day to a day. So day one would be day one, day two would be day two. Yeah, you, you stick to within it to yeah. make it manageable. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, it was seven nights, so really it was only seven days of driving. Mm. We were out there for eleven days because the trip was supposed to go to Rome first. Yeah. That was the finish line was supposed to be Rome. Oh, okay. And we drove to Rome and it was appalling, like in terms of the road conditions, mm. the street conditions, the vibe there. It was like, we arrived into Rome at maybe 1.30 a.m. in the morning, gangs of lads, hoods up on every corner. Yeah. It was like being in the Bronx, like genuinely rough, rough. You don't want to be taking all those cars there, do you? No, and all the, it's not just the cars. You're a moving risk. Yeah. Everyone knows with supercars comes money, watches, jewelry, yeah, diamonds, yeah. luggage. You're a big rolling target. Mm. So we have to be very mindful of that and try and keep the group very safe, which is why then 
we moved from Rome over to Rimini, which is the opposite coastline. That was great. That's a nice little one there, Amazing wasn't it? Amazing place, yeah. Very safe, very secure, very pretty. Yeah. And no risk for our business. So unfortunately on the road, on research trips, things do happen. Problems occur, whether it's between the group, the team, whether it's a road, whether it's the city that we've chosen isn't mm. suitable. So yeah, we ended up 11 or 12 days on the road last time. And Bloody that yeah. was like after day seven or day eight, it was tensions running high. Put it this way, the yeah. end of the trip, genuinely, me and my business partner had a big variety right outside the hotel. <laughs> okay. He drove home. I drove back to, do you remember Orvieto, the town on top of the hill? Yeah. The big cathedral. Yeah, yeah. I drove back to Orvieto because I wasn't happy with Orvieto. So he went that way home. Tom felt torn between me and him. So Tom fucked off down the middle and went somewhere else. And I went back and carried on doing the job. Yeah. So it, it gets... What, what, in what way then? Because you're disagreeing on what, what should be the product. <laughs> you no, know, we went or out the just, before and got all pissed off. Or you just got hung over. <laughs> yeah, and we had a big row. That's what happened, actually. Yeah. Like, there's nine times out of ten, we'll have an argument for something that's worth arguing about. But this particular occasion, it's, it's just, like, yeah, we finished the trip, celebrate, go out, we all got smashed. Oh, uh, a big argument. Up grumpy bastards the next yeah, day, that was basically. It. Yeah. So, um, well, you listen, arguments make your relationship stronger. Absolutely, I say that all the time. You, you haven't got a real strong relationship with, talk, with someone until you've fallen out a little bit and made back up. No. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. that shows, if you're going to fall out with someone and then you, you're done, yeah, it's then not worth you, it you, you haven't got a no. strong relationship no. with the people you're closest to in your life, you probably argue with the I, most. I actually said to him at the time, I said, James, me and you are, are supposed to be like brothers. Like, if, me and you could go and get on the grass over there and I punch each other's head in and get up, shake hands and carry on doing business. Yeah. That's how it should be. Yeah. If, I, if you were blood brothers, nine times out of 10, you got no choice but to make up because you're yeah. brothers. Yeah, so that's, that's it. That's how it is for me and James really. Absolutely, mate. It's took six, seven years to get it like that. Do you know what I mean? There's been mm. plenty of times where we've both been like, oh, fuck off, fuck you, bro. I'm not interested. And then you've just keep coming back to each other. You obviously need each other and then you've built that stronger relationship. It's um, obviously, as you've met James, so as you know, yeah, he's yeah. very laid back. And I'm really not that laid back at all, so it's not, it works. <laughs> yeah, but that's probably that probably helps. Yeah, it works. If you really both, well. if you both, uh, if you both, that the one way. If yeah, you both you put heads a lot more. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And it works really well. But like yin and yang. Yeah, massively. Yeah, but it's like he's got his strong points and I've got mine. Do you know what I mean? It's, that's what makes a good partnership. That is. Hundred percent. If you've got the same, uh, if you've got the same qualities. At, as your partner, then that doesn't normally work. You've no. got to have different traits and be able to add value in different ways, always yeah. fine. To have a good relationship yeah, and we've business. Got, we've got the same morals in life and business. Yeah. But we're totally different. Different people. skill sets. Yeah, different yeah. skill sets altogether. You yeah. can offer something. So yeah. when the cannon runs on, you're doing one thing and, and he's, he's doing another. Because I said to you, you know, I thought, what a great job, you know, and you went, it's hard. Like you graft, don't you? You work really hard and you take it dead seriously, whether it comes to the planning, whether it comes to the execution, do you know what I mean? Because you, you run a tight ship as well when oh, you're man. there, don't you? We got to um, we got to the hotel on night one, mega one that you was on. And I don't know what had gone wrong with the rooming list for the hotel, but the rooms were all to fuck. Oh. People were being checked in and out and in and out. So when we got to Annecy the next day, me and my team, we sat up till 2 a.m. in the morning in the hotel lobby on our laptops, refining everything that we thought may have caused an issue. Mm. And in actual fact, when we got to the hotel the next day, their rooming list was perfect from what we had sent, and it turned out that night one's hotel had fucked it. Ah, uh, right. So we're always trying to be one step ahead and try and fix a problem, whereas I went on another rally when I was about 18, and it was like, once they had your money, they just didn't care. No, Like yeah. it, There was people having crashes and no recovery vehicles, Shit. and it was... There was just no care. Was and no that, that's, you do take it seriously, though. Yeah. And that's because you want everyone to have a great experience. That's like the you, reason, isn't it? Your return custom is your easiest custom. Yeah. That's it's 10 times easier than a new sale because they've been, they know you, yeah. they know what caliber of people you are, they know what your business is like. So maintaining the clients that you've got is just as, if not more important, than finding new ones. Yeah, of course. So There's a lot of referrals about as well, isn't there? A lot of, a lot of our And a lot of repeat business. Yeah, like people know. come to me that have got like, I know lads that have got... 500, 800, a million followers. And like, how do you get the numbers you get? And it's word of mouth. We've put on a good service for 10 years now. Mm. And it's, you can come into any new industry and you can have a million followers. You are not necessarily going to have business straight away. No. Because people aren't daft and they want to watch what you're going to do, see what's going to materialise before they part with their money. And now, the more you've done, the momentum builds up and you've got so much footage 
Does that help? Because you have literally a full-time oh, crew with you. Yeah. When we were there, you had a whole, not just one person, there was a crew of people going around filming everything, uh, interviewing everybody, and then that obviously then comes out on your social media, yeah, shows people. It. Yeah, is that what you do? Yeah, we try, so we try and stockpile it as much as we can. Do you do that obviously. at all the events or just on the Mega Run? Well, so we'll, we'll have more um, content creators on the Mega Run, Yeah, more photographers, videographers there, than we would do on perhaps Spring Of course, because that's your, that's your that main event. It's event yeah. to capture all of it, and you can't expect the man who's capturing all the cars to capture all the nightlife, because he's going to be... Oh, uh, so you have an evening one, do you? Well, we we'll just kind of mix it up a little bit yeah, and yeah. see who wants to go and do what. We can't... As a, as a business, uh, as an employer, yeah. we're very laid back. Like, I always give my team the chance to do what they want to do. Mm. So, right, guys, what you're, you're videoing, you're videoing. Do you want to do the night? Do you want to do the day? Go I kind of mix it, sort it yeah. out between themselves. Yeah, let as long as the job it. gets done, you're I'm cool happy, with it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's when the job doesn't get done and you've been promised a million things. That's when I start to get my hair off. Or, yeah. Yeah, I can't stand that, doesn't it, Eddie? Um, of course. <clears throat> but, yeah, that's... Um, so, um, so, what's the plans for the future, then? You built this up now. You're not going to rest on your laurels, I'm sure. You, you've got bigger plans. I haven't got a plan. You haven't got a I plan? I haven't got a plan. Do you know what? I get asked this question probably more than any other questions. So yeah. I should probably have a great answer for it. But <laughs> I just get up and work every day like I have done for the last 10 years. I haven't got a business plan where I hope to reach this valuation by this year or these projections mean this is going to happen. I just get up every day and fight for my business yeah. as much as I did the day before, as much as I did the, the year before. So if in another 10 years' time I've put in the same love, dedication, effort that I have for the last 10 years, then theoretically it should be twice as big as it is now. Yeah. Worth twice as much. Absolutely. I'm not, gonna sit, I'm not one of those guys that sits there worrying about specific targets or specific valuations or specific yeah. anything really. I just graft and graft and graft and then look up after two years and go, oh, shit, fucking hell, we were there. Well, that's right, because you got your trajectory right. You're headed on the right trajectory. You've planted all the seeds and you're just grafting now. And you, it, it's good if you sometimes, if you're present in the moment with what you're doing, there's more quality to your work, isn't there? It, we're if a very just, reactive yeah. business. Yeah. So it's not like we'll plan out a week or two weeks or four weeks in advance of what we're going to do and where we're going to go and all the rest of it. We are reactive. This comes to us, we go... That comes up, we plan it in, then for the, for that, whatever it is, it's literally every day something new mm. comes up and I have to adjust my diary for the next week. Every week something changes. Yeah. It's never, ever organised to a T in... Not, not in terms of poor organisation, but like... Yeah, but it doesn't allow... Your type of lifestyle doesn't, doesn't allow, allow that strict yeah. regime of yeah. planning a month or two in ahead. Perfect for me to describe that is, you know, if you've got a diet plan and people say, oh, you, you, you can stick to it, everybody makes an excuse. Yeah. With me, I could have to get in the car and drive to the other side of France tomorrow. Someone could bring me with a car for sale, or yeah. a recovery needs to be done, or one of our Canon Run members may need help with something. Yeah, and we've got to go like that. And you just that is our life, genuinely. Yeah. So it's not an excuse. It's not like, yeah, that's it's just how it is. Brilliant. So yes, yeah, stressful. So stressful. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you've done really well, and like I said earlier, mate, you've you've. If someone looked at your lifestyle and they could see what you were doing, I think that's what a lot, especially the younger lads, would think, oh, yeah, but we've I, want had, a job, I want a life like Jay Cannon's we've, got. We've put up big job in, like job opportunities over the last yeah. three months on our Instagram pages, and it hasn't been directly to work with the Cannon Run. It's been to work with our other company, which is ATH Vodka. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, that's right. They were So we're on the Mega Run, that was... You, the, every night Welcome we were drinking drink. that, every yeah. night. It's great. It's all yeah. flavoured vodkas, wasn't it? It's made here at home in Britain. Yeah. It's a company that we kind of developed and backed off the back of Cannon Run. Yeah. Um, and it's probably going to overtake Cannon Run in the next 18 months. Really? Because yeah. we were lying, some of you guys were going to all the clubs when we were there as well, sorted a few deals, and they? So was we, being sold at some of the places yeah, as well, we, wasn't we, it? We, if we, we will make them stock it. We'll give it them at the same price that they'd pay for it out of wholesale, of course. Yeah. But when everyone walks in, they keep saying the same thing. It ends up becoming a bit of a trend, and then on the trip, before you know it, it's... It is actually good vodka, though, as well, because it's flavoured. It is good vodka. And the bottles are all... Uh, lit up. Lit hand, up and hand everything. Embossed, engraved, hand-painted. Like, it's... Uh, by paper, you'd have to judge it yourself, but but on paper, it's the best vodka in the world. There is no better vodka. I wasn't too hungover off it, either. So it's very like, clean. There's no yeah. artificial additives. There's no colouring. So, like, take AU as an example. You put They put a tablet in AU yeah. for it to fizz up and get the flavour and the colour. That's fully artificial coloured and flavoured. Ah, uh, right, okay. So with ours, it's proper Costa Rican pineapples, proper mangoes, pr ring, real English raspberries distilled into it correctly through a process that's done here in the UK. Brilliant, mate. So, so And again, that comes from the network of uh, all the stuff you've been doing. And the business, it's not just us in ATH, there's myself and James, and we have a couple of other partners that are Of in course, it. yeah. And that's come through the Canon Network as well, meeting those guys has come through the network. 
Brilliant. So, um, with the network then, so you don't, because I just thought when this mega run come up, I thought you did one event a year. No. But since I've been on the mailing list, you've got them flipping every, like every, month. every what? Every other month. Every other month. Every other month. Yeah, yeah so. you do. And you do like ones in Land Rovers. And so I just saw one the other day, didn't you? Spring Break's our first one. Yeah, year. that's right. And they got an Irish one as well or something. So it normally goes Spring Break, okay. which is normally a UK based trip. But 2024, we're doing London to Belgium. Yeah. Which will be a nice little European adventure for people. It's only three days. Then we go into Mega Run. Then we go into Ireland. So Ireland's a four-day tour of the whole of Ireland. Basically. Everyone was saying phenomenal uh, how good that one was the as well. Are, like the police. It's well, quite. That's not an expensive event either, is it? Not? No, it's, two, it's, it's like, like fourteen hundred quid, fifteen hundred quid. For and Ireland. that's for a car. For one car, two people, four so days. It's affordable by anybody. Very, that one is, very isn't it? Affordable, mate. yeah. And it, you do get some of the same thrills. The roads, the the scenery in Ireland is completely underrated. Yeah. If you don't go to Ireland, you don't know about it. I know it's amazing, isn't it's it? Amazing, yeah. Amazing, mate. Yeah. Um, so then we go in from Ireland then into Carrera Grande, which is our Spanish mega run for Spanish clients. Oh, is that all over in Ibiza or? So we did no. this year, we did uh, oh, Mar uh, Marbella, Marbella, was it? Marbella, yeah. Alicante, Ibiza. Different theme, isn't there to each one then, I suppose? Yeah, you got party and I'd, I'd imagine that's a big party one, is it? Big party one, that. Yeah. So the, the, um, there's a lot less driving with that one and a lot more partying because the client base sounds wouldn't. good yeah, well <laughs> it depends for me it's yeah like, you like the driving don't you I, I, prefer, I like, I the, like the driving inside. but if you do too much partying then you don't do enough networking yeah it's kind of, yeah. you've got to because once you go past a certain level yeah of, of course in, you know it's everything just becomes yeah yeah rubbish could be anyone it. there couldn't they yeah so yeah so that's um, so Carrera Grande that's the Spanish European one and then we go into uh, September Slammer then, which is a UK-based trip. So we finished that last month, and we went up to Scotland to Loch Lomond and did all the Scottish roads. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and then we always do Landlords, which is our sister company in November every year, and we always keep that trip exactly the same. Just one event a year. That one is one event a year. Yeah, because so you need the bit of the shitty weather, do you, for that one? Not necessarily. You have as much fun in the sun, or if it's raining. So yeah. rather than taking the A roads around the the, the mountains, mm. we'll take the little side tracks. Yeah, so yeah. There's no wear and tear to your vehicles. You're still on tarmac, but you're taking a lot more twisties and yeah. seeing a lot more stuff. And we limit it to 25 jeeps only for that reason. But then we check into the hotel in the lakes for two nights. We stay in the same hotel for two nights. Okay, that's good, trip. like a base. Yeah, that's it's good. a base for it. Then the next day, so the day one's all about the driving, driving through a couple of fours. I'd do that. I'd like to do that one, you Mate, know. It's yeah, I'll try that one. For day two, we go and do a clay pigeon shoot in the morning. Yeah. And in the afternoon, we go and do archery. Then that night, then we have a three-course meal at the hotel, which is beautiful. Then the next day, then we go up to Lake Windermere and we pick up 15 electric boats and we all go out on self-drive boats for two hours on the lakes. And it ends up Brilliant. like bumper yeah. and a bit of crack. It's, but it's a lot more, um, in terms of the weather, it's a lot more easy because if it's raining, if it's pouring, doesn't if it's matter. sunny, if yeah. it's snowing, it doesn't matter. And it kind of it almost adds a little bit more of an authentic feel to it if it mm. is raining. Do you know what I mean? So everyone's in their wellies and barber jackets and cigars and whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah, sounds um, good. And it's all Land Rovers, Yoruses, G-Wagons. Is that one good for networking as well? Is that a different type of it's a, client? It's, it's a different type of... You'll, you'll get some of the Mega Run guys on there. Yeah. But it's a lot more intimate because there's a lot less of you. So you get yeah. to know everybody a lot more than what you would on Mega Run. Three days, 40 people instead of a week and 120 odd people. Yeah, yeah, You don't get course. a chance to get around everybody even though you want to. And with landlords, like I said, it's you're sitting in the hotel having a cigar or a, bit, a glass of whiskey in front of the fire before you go out for an hour and a half, like nice open log mm. fire. And then the next morning, you don't have to leave the hotel till 11. So you get up with everybody, have a bit of breakfast. Yeah, of no course. No pressure whatsoever. And you get a few of the lads get up in the morning, they go swimming in the cold lake or they're up on the infinity pool on the roof of the hotel, which overlooks the lake. It's a real, real sort of gentleman's trip. Sounds good, mate. It's fucking brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, and then Christmas finale. That finishes oh, there's it. another one. The Christmas finale. First What's weekend of December. Oh, first week, yeah. Yeah, every year. Um, we normally see about 150 people seated for dinner. Bloody hell. Black gala. To, sorry, black so that, tie gala. Is that not a, that's not a driving event, that's like just socialised. So, so we have two start lines in the morning on a Saturday. Yeah. One's in London, one's in Manchester, because we have clients from south and north that and like just, to come. Ah, okay. And just meet up at the... We meet in the middle at a regrouping point and then carry on the rest of the day together. So we'll do a bit of a drive on the Saturday and then we finish in the Cotswolds Water Park Hotel and Spa on a Saturday evening. For a big group. Black meal. tie, gala dinner, big Brilliant. auction, loads of performances, loads of singing, loads of. We even do like a lot of games and stuff. Yeah, so we'll oh, balloons on the table. I can imagine. To get money when you do your parties, stuff. you know, you you know what you're doing. You but think. it's like yeah. the Christmas one is <clears throat> more of a family orientated party. So yeah. we'll get everybody up on stage and get them actually included with the game. 
So everyone starts off with a balloon and the person at the end has just daft stuff like that. Yeah. They'll take home 500 quid or a grand or whatever it is and it really gets the whole room engaged with each other. Mm. And it's it's a real family-friendly event, that one. Which Sounds is, brilliant, It's mate. done a lot of drinking and a lot of fun. Yeah. But it's very family-friendly, yeah. yeah. Sounds good, mate. Big one for networking, that. And it's only 429 quid for two people, including your three-course dinner. That's good. It's really, really yeah, good. Yeah, that's the accommodation at the Cotswolds as well. Bloody hell, that is great. Just, we don't, there's no margin in that trip for no. us at all. It's just to put on a big thank you celebration. Yeah, it, just bringing all the customers together yeah. then for a bit of a thank yeah. you at the end of the year. And I think the price reflects that as well. I think they can tell from yeah. what we've done and what we do at the event that there's no profit for us in that one. It's just to cover the dinner, the breakfast, the room, mm. and then a bit of staffing. Brilliant, mate. Well... That's, yeah. that's been that's great that's, thank you for outlining all that as well it's been good for anyone that's listening so they know but um, it's been good to speak to you today Jay uh, thank you for coming down mate I've been really welcome. interested I feel like I get to know you a little bit better obviously every time we speak um, I know it was a bit of a nightmare getting here and no, thank, right. thank god right. you didn't get a speeding uh, ticket no, the police officer was you managed to charm him he was, uh, to be fair he was alright I think 9 times out of 10 if you show them respect you're alright yeah I always try to yeah. but brilliant Jay thank you very much buddy it's I been was, a great to have you on cheers mate. I'll put that mic back and do that again. <laughs> there you go, mate.